Welcome back to the Student Hub Live. Well, this is our Refreshers Orientation event here at The Open University on our Student Hub Live online interactive platform. Now, we've got a range of guests here, and our next session is about tutors and tutorials. And I'm joined by John Quillo and Iman Hassan. Thank you for coming along today. A pleasure. Hello. We've been spending a lot of time talking about the importance of tutors and about building the relationship. But first, I'd like to check in with everybody at home because they've been sending us all of their study buddies and their study spaces. Kath, how is everybody? Everybody is fabulous. We are talking bread now because apparently if you have a study buddy they can clear up any messes ah. made when you're making bread. But we've got some super cute fluffers. Look oh. at this. This is Rennie's dog Nanook who's just... Oh that's a fluffy so dog. Fluffy. And then we've got teeny teeny tiny dog. This is Suki. This is Jan's. Oh, and they cute. say that only dogs sit on, uh, cats sit on the books. Well, yeah. actually, cats haven't been featuring very prominently, Kath, have we they? I have think a, on our cats. We have a couple of cats. Yeah, dogs do seem to be winning out on this. So we have George, who's Elu's cat. So he's chilling Aww. there, just kind of giving it some attitude. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got the very lovely Chloe. Oh. Who apparently is more qualified than her owner, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> well, she won't be for much longer, Jim. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, everyone's kind of... Oh, and, and Hayley is saying she can see Nova on the wall. That's her oh. dog. So, but yeah, everyone's kind of just getting ready and chatting about kind of how they feel and how they're managing their notes. Some of them are talking about bullet notes and things like that. Oh. So just how they plan and how they try and set things up. And a lot of everything is so cute. Yes. That's a lot of cute. Oh, we've had some lovely pictures and those are just a few. We'll put them up on the board. And if you'd like to send us a picture of your study buddy or your study space, we'll be coming back to show the other ones we've received a bit later. Studenthub at open.ac.uk and we'll print them out and put them on the board. Okay, so now we've got some things we'd like to vote on. We'd like to know how often would you usually contact your tutor? Now, we know a lot of you are new, so usually it might not mean anything to you. But do you think it should be often, occasionally or never? We'd also like to know what are your three main study concerns? You can put a single word for those, so try and sum those up in a word. But if you can only think of one or two, that's fine. Just put a full stop in the other boxes, otherwise your results won't submit. And when you do, you can see what everyone else at home says also. And then we've got a continuum. How confident do you feel about contacting your tutor from very confident to not confident at all? So, John Quill and Iman, what are some of the things that tutors do and how do students best use that relationship? OK, so your tutor is there to support you through your module and they want you to succeed just as much as you do. So, yes, they are there to mark your assignments, but they're there for much more than that. So if you've got worries, concerns, your tutor can always be your first port of call, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. And, and never be frightened to ask them any question. You know, very often people say, oh, that's, I, I, that's a really silly question. That seems, you know, daft. But actually, it's, it's, um, we're more than happy to answer any question. And we know that there's so much to, to try to unpack and navigate and get used to that um, it, it can be quite overwhelming to begin with so the first person to call is or contact is always your tutor always really helpful now tutors work i mean you you're both tutors but you both have other jobs john call you're in economics and um Iman, you're a senior faculty manager here in the uh, faculty of arts and social sciences so tutors work part-time for the open university and they have a a cohort of students don't they how well do they get to know their students and what might students then expect from this relationship okay well I guess in an ideal world um, your tutor will try and contact you at the beginning of the module um, and that's to get to know you and also to break the ice yeah. because it's always a bit nerve-wracking yes. isn't it you know if yeah. you're a student and you're phoning a tutor who you've never talked to you know I, I, I just think that for, for students that that is quite an anxious time so as tutors we always try and establish that early contact with you in order to break the ice and so you know you know we're just normal friendly people <laughs> and it also helps us because you know if we get to know a little bit about each student then you know we we want to give 
personal attention to each each student and our feedback is very personal so you know it's pertaining to that particular student so again if we have a sense of who that person is it you know that that enables us to be a bit more you know we, we can help in that in that personal yeah. feedback to well, students that's right you know as an example i mean it, you know obviously lots of our students uh, are working and have family commitments sometimes our students um, have illnesses or disabilities and so there may be different ways to tailor our advice mm. to help to help them um, you know navigate the materials better and sometimes actually to sort of slim down the mm. workload because Absolutely. not everybody yeah. can st study every bit mm. of a module mm. sometimes you do have to steer a, a course through it that just takes you to the assignments and gets you through that's fair enough yeah. now, as well as being um, a guide for the sort of 15 to 20 students that each tutor will have in their cohort um, tutors mark the work which is very important that might be why students can be quite fearful of them because of course you want to you know impress someone who's marking your work but of course we have guidelines and you know being nice to your tutor won't necessarily mean that you'll get a better grade <laughs> well unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> but there's something about this feedback model mm. that's very distinctive about the open university and about being a student here at the OU yeah incredibly um, so on your assignment you're probably going to be anxious about the mark you get but actually what's far more important is the feedback and feed forward that you mm. get from your tutor so that's where a lot of the actual teaching if you like comes in it's about um, helping you as a student to become more aware of what you need to do to improve um, so that so those those comments are really crucial mm. and we're, we're also trying to support students Oh gosh, Kath. <laughs> oh, an apple! Oh, oh so thank I you. Oh, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, unfortunately, I don't think um, an apple will will get better. <laughs> but what a lovely thought. <laughs> Bribery might work. <laughs> the, other, the other thing I was going to say, though, is is actually you know seriously about about marking. Um, so the the assignments and the kind of guidance on marking are actually decided by the module teams who create the course. So it's not it, it's not as if the tutors have complete mm. discretion on how they mark so, your work yeah. I mean obviously you know these guidelines from the module team are designed to make sure that all tutors mark in a very similar way uh, in order to be fair to all students so what's tailored is the kind of feedback and feed forward that plays with your strengths and weaknesses as a student um, but the actual the actual marking very often actually is you know sometimes well sometimes it's going to be fairly automatic so so no yeah, the apple won't work so. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you are being marked on a particular task and so you know often you might have to do a report or um, a, an essay or something mm. like this and so each task is quite different and you'll get feedback and because tutors are human as well they're expressing something and you're expressing something yep. and sometimes I'm not quite sure what someone's written and I'll say this needs a bit of clarity but equally sometimes my mm. students will say actually I really don't understand what you mean by this mm. and so seeking clarity on that feedback yes. is, is part of the whole communication isn't mm. it yeah yeah it, yes it is a, it is a dialogue and tutors want it very much to be a dialogue so that we are you know we, we welcome questions you know if something isn't clear we we're, we're very open to you know a student coming back and saying actually you know I'm not quite sure what you mean so and then we can we can have a discussion and sometimes it might mean that we have a discussion by phone that might be easier than you know constantly via email wow biscuits, <laughs> biscuits. Yes. well biscuits work <laughs> which is all about oh, reaching yes. to the top and, and, and having regular breaks as well. Now, we asked everybody at home what their three main study concerns were. Mm -hmm. Okay, So let, let's see what everyone had to say. Right, time is the biggest oh, one. Yes. Um, poor IT skills, failing, losing track, lack of time, getting a good mark, time management, understanding text, the workload, memory, academic writing, content, staying motivated, not keeping up. Analyzing tutorials, lack of time, stress, new surroundings, evaluating, getting a good mark. 
language, taking the right notes, lots and lots mm -hmm. of, of things. Yeah. So of all of those, which are really, really mm -hmm. valid concerns mm -hmm. and things that actually tutors, student support teams and hopefully Student Hub Live can help with, mm -hmm. um, what might a tutor talk to students about out of some of those concerns? Right, so it's interesting that time features mm. very heavily there. I, I think, you know, for all our students, they're very time constrained. And I guess one of the most common uh, questions that we get is, can I have an extension yeah, for my absolutely. assignment? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we're always happy to give extensions, uh, you know, where, where they will help. But your tutor will probably want to discuss with you, okay, you know, um, what's what's the reason because um, sometimes the answer might be an extension for now but there might be something else that needs to be done in order to help you stay on track with yeah. your studies um, so yes yeah. and then we can also if if a student really you know if a student has some particular concerns about the module as well um, you know it might be that we say well maybe we'll have a, a, a discussion about that, um, that and that would be helpful because um, sometimes you're not quite sure what it is you don't understand and sometimes that immediate conversation can tease out where some of the maybe the the, the lack of clarity is or the misunderstandings or or not understanding um, so we, we very much welcome you know we want to be able to have that dialogue mm. and and really mm. try to support yeah. students and one of the things we often talk about early on is where students very commonly commonly they're studying more than one module at a time mm. and you know if we've, we've got so many modules across the open university it's impossible to to avoid the assignment dates sometimes clashing or at least mm. being in the same week so you know it's useful to have a discussion with students about how to manage that you know one way to manage it might be an extension but for example on the um, module that I've been working on recently we've actually got a two-week window for each assignment and so maybe with a bit of forward planning uh, students can bring ahead the work on one assignment in order not to be overloaded in one week, you know, with two or more assignments. Mm. Well, Jennifer and Hayley um, both want uh, remote control cars, but Jennifer wants it to bring her wine while she's studying. <laughs> um, Hayley, on the other hand, is happy with the Jaffa cakes. Yeah, you have to be careful, Jennifer, with, with uh, these wet goods and not, not filling the glass up too much. Now, <laughs> tutorials are a really important thing, and we've been having a lot of discussion about tutorials recently, and they're all going up at the moment. Kath, you work in the student support team, and I hear that uh, some of the tutorials are going up, some are still being populated. What's the situation? At the moment, the tutorial system is still a little bit work in progress. So we've got the majority of tutorials set up for the modules. We have a few problem modules like DD102, AA100, mm. where they're showing up and then they're disappearing. And I know it's really frustrating, but our IT bods are working on it. So we are planning to have everything up and running by the 6th, when everything is officially starting. So hopefully everyone will be able to book then. But we are working on it, we promise. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> yes, no, one of these technical glitches. Um, yeah, I think so. Could I also say that if, if that is the case mm. and a student can't book, then just, just email, drop, drop their, their, uh, their tutor a quick email and just say, oh, I'm, I'm coming along, you know, just, just to let them yeah. know. Yeah. Um, you or can even turn just, you or just book, turn you? up, yeah. you know. But, mm. but, but I mean, it's nice if, you know, you've, you've got a sense of yeah. the tutor knows that yeah. you're coming. I know that can also help to sort of reassure you as well yes so, um, no it's nice yeah. to be able to have names and then you yeah. can email the, the group for yeah. example if you want something um, brought into the session yeah. um, and to let them know where you are but again you can just turn up if Absolutely. you want to yeah. now some tutors will run tutorials but sometimes they will team teach so it might be a group of people it might not be your individual t tutor running either a face-to-face -face or an online tutorial what should students expect then from tutorials I think where, where it's a, a, a collective, you know, you're getting a range of different sort of support and, and um, uh, input um, in terms of interest and, and ideas from, from different tutors. Also, you've got a bigger group of students and tutors, so there's, there's probably more opportunity to do more small group work. But even in a, in a single tutorial with a tutor, um, tutors very often are trying to um, enable students to understand the material, give them an opportunity to discuss the ideas. Um, and so there's, there's, a, there's a real sort of sharing and, and exploring the module materials because obviously people are working you know, on their own on the material. So it's, a, it's an opportunity to come together and to, to really try to understand 
understand uh, you know a little bit more about the content of the, of the mm. module that you're studying yeah and, and as you said earlier I mean most tutors are also working they're very often working in the field that's the same subject as the module so by meeting with more than one tutor you actually get these really interesting mm. different perspectives I, I think that's mm. really useful yeah. Now, one of the things that students can be concerned with is, is talking in online tutorials. Mm -hmm. And we've had an online tutorial today, and we've got some uh, this afternoon. So uh, at 4 o'clock, there's a session on putting it all together. So you can go into the Adobe Connect room and think about what you've learned and um, have a chance to experience the online room and also this evening. But what might students then expect from an online tutorial? Well, OK. Um, yeah, there is that first nerve-wracking bit about, about getting used to the equipment, getting used to, to talking online. And I have to say, I've lost count of the number of students who tell me they don't have a microphone. Mm. And I always wonder if they do really, and they're just a bit shy. It's like anything. I think you've got to you know, just take the plunge. And actually, once you've done that, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. And, and we usually find then we can't, we can't stop students chattering, mm. you know, which is great. Yeah. But even if you haven't got a microphone, you know, there's, there's a chat box there. So it's just like texting you can communicate that way um, really it's it's pretty much like being in a face-to-face -face classroom except that you know you're, you're just there in a virtual way and um, it obviously has the advantage that you haven't got to travel and no tutor is going to mind if you dip in and out of the tutorial because you've got to go and settle or your kid with or your feed the dog or whatever. Kilo dog on your lap and Absolutely. your pajamas. Your glass of wine. <laughs> yes, yeah, indeed. Yeah. There we are, there, Jennifer. So You'll be fine. <laughs> so there are some advantages of online tutorials as well. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Now we asked everybody at home um, how confident they were about contacting their tutor. Let's see what everybody said. So, lots of people very, very confident, so that's great, great to see. Um, and obviously those people who've logged on today and are doing this live, uh, it's no more difficult than chatting uh, like you would do here at the Student Hub Live. So let's just go through some quick fire questions um, about what tutors can and can't do so we can mm. get some answers. Can students submit assignments early? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Will the tutors mark them early? No, no, not usually. Um, and that's for a very good reason. You know, it's because um, other students haven't yet submitted, so they, we don't want the answers out there until everybody's had a chance to do the assignment. OK. When typically could students expect their assignments returned to them? Well, tutors have a, a ten week, a ten sorry, a ten day. <laughs> ten <weeks>. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. <laughs> that <was a> <laughs> the module's gone. Ten days. They yeah. have ten working days okay. to complete. So some tutors will will get that back before. But I think you know, if if anyone has a, a query about when when they're going to get their their um, assignments back, then to contact the tutor directly. Okay. Um, but that ten ten day window is is you know not. You know, it's helpful as a guide for students so that they don't, you know, once they've submitted, they can sort of go off and continue doing their study and not worry, you know, try not to worry about it. You know, it'll, it'll, it's in process and it's getting done. Um, and then they'll, they'll hear from their tutor. And they should, when they submit, they'll have a receipt. They'll get an email receipt to let them know that they've submitted. So they'll know it's gone. Um, and they also have an opportunity to try what we call a dummy TMA. Okay. So before the module starts, they yep. can submit it, just a test document, just to just to make sure that everything's working and be reassured and, and the tutor can mm -hmm. just send it back and say, it's all, it's all working fine. And also, fine. actually, until your uh, assignment has been downloaded by your tutor, you can actually upload a later version yeah. of it, and that's quite useful mm. if you suddenly get cold feet. And yes. most tutors, for that reason, do not download the assignments yeah. until the cutoff date. Okay. Can tutors check students' drafts? Mm, that's a tricky one. I mean, mm. yes, we can, but we can't give you the answers. Okay. So we could give you some quite generic advice about how your assignment is shaping up. But we obviously can't give you detailed feedback on a draft. No. And um, I think the other thing with that as well is that you could, very often, you might have some sort of key ideas or structure about what, what it is and that might be quite useful to have a conversation over the phone yeah. um, as, mm -hmm. as much as having a draft yeah. um, so and tutors are very often quite happy to do that yeah. and so that's about clarifying the question isn't it but but sometimes mm. students might email and say I don't really know how to approach this and yes. then, then what do you say um, well, I guess, you know, it depends on, on the, the um, assignment, I guess. But say it's an essay, then probably we're going to say, well, have you tried an essay plan? Yeah. Um, and um, there's lots of guidance yeah. on essay plans, sometimes embedded within modules, yeah. uh, like DD102 mm. and, and uh, the module that, that, that I'm working on. Um, but also there's, there's a lot 
of OU study skills, which you can find through the Student Home Help Centre. Yeah. You know, so I think your tutor will steer you yeah. to ways that but you can approach. But they can't tell you the answer, but they can't tell you the answer. Or what to do. Okay, yeah. brilliant. All right, excellent. So lots of questions there um, about that. And also one other question I've had from somebody was about the word limit. Mm -hmm. What counts towards the word limit? Right, so that is, that's going to vary by module, yeah. and so um, under your assignment tab on mm. the um, module website, you'll find some assessment guidance, and it should say in there, but typically things like tables and diagrams don't usually count towards the word count. Um, and neither well. does the title and the yeah, reference. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yes. But it's yes. important to check and it's important yes, to it know the word count change. because they're there for a reason, yes. aren't they? Mm. Yes. Brilliant. Excellent. Now, I've asked you to bring something for our students' hierarchy of need. So what do you think students need? Well, I think one of the things they need to do is take care of themselves because I think you come in and you feel there's all of this to do, but you've still got your other lives and your other roles. And so it's trying to juggle and adjust to that. So I think it's important to have some time where you are not just constantly thinking about your study or, or what you're not doing, but that you're, you know, you can just relax and you can have some fun as well. So shall I show you what I, yes. I think this is? <laughs> A comic. So, a comic. <laughs> so actually just engaging with something, have a laugh, have yeah. some fun, um, engage with something else and just make sure that you're taking care of yourself as well. And you're allowed to do so and I think it's really important mm. and all tutors will encourage students to make sure that you know they're just not constantly focusing yes. on their study or and worrying reading for about pleasure is a good thing to Absolutely. do isn't it even yeah. if it's yeah. a brief brilliant yeah. John Cole, what's people okay sorry I'm going to be a bit more serious um <laughs> and this is not break at all <laughs> <laughs> typical invite <laughs> someone from economics <laughs> absolutely sorry about that so I th I think a really what, what's really key in in learning is being able to become self-reflective um, to understand what your goals are and be able to kind of assess how well you're uh, achieving those goals, what gaps you've got, um, what you might need to do to fill those gaps and the kind of um, constraints that there are there who might help you get over them. And one way you can do that is to um, to, to keep a personal log. So Karen, here is my <laughs> personal log. <laughs> oh, very good, John <laughs> You. I thought you were going to say hug a tree, but this is much more fun. <laughs> well, and if you're cold, you, if you're cold, you can always burn it for, for, for heat. So. <laughs> very good, <laughs> excellent. Well, thank you so much. You've both shown us that tutors are very, very approachable, lovely people. I hope that's given you more confidence to get in touch with your tutor and start exploring that part of your OU learning journey. And uh, book your tutorials online. But like we say, if you can't book them, don't worry. Just turn up. Um, everybody is welcome at those, and they'll be starting to get up and running when the modules open next week. Right, our next session, rather appropriately uh, for Jennifer, is the cellar bar. So we have a bar on campus and we're going to show you around uh, there. And then we're going to be back for our next session, uh, which is a student story. And we're going to be talking to Zach. I'll see you in a few minutes.